So I want you to center yourself so that you're on top of either one bolster or a bolster and a blanket. So you'll figure this out as far as your height um, needs because of your knees. So these first shapes are somewhat intermediate, but they're all um, not weight bearing into your knees or your joints. So you'll find that it's about exploring your range of motion. So when I sit centered on my bolster, I want you to have a block that's between the knees or a ball. It can be either. You'll notice that the block likely feels a little bit heavier and then the ball is clearly a lighter object for you to kind of muster between the knees and it's your choice, okay? So if you have kind of grippy hip flexors, the top feels like they tense up a lot, I would use the ball if you have the option because there'll be a little less load into the flexors. So you're sitting either on one bolster or a bolster and a blanket. You can always add some height so that it's easier for your back, okay? So as we work our way into the hands onto the knees, you wanna center yourself Perhaps this begins as a movement breath sequence. So the hands kind of feel the patellas and maybe there's a little bit of sensation there or interestingly enough, sometimes kind of subtle movement even though they're still. So when you touch onto the tops of the knees, you're gonna work your way towards elongating your spine. So I want you to feel the chest muscles motion forwards, gradually lift up through the chin and then tilt your right ear to your right shoulder to stretch the left side of the neck. Okay, try to keep that connection of the hands onto the legs and then come back into the center but all the way through till the left ear goes to the left shoulder. Let the weight of your kind of facial muscles response, which is looking or swallowing or things that create tension in our face, see if you can let those relax a bit. Maybe it's around the eyes, the nose, the jaw. Now when you come back center, already you're going to start working into rounding. So you're going to hollow through the core like you would in any cat pose. And then you'll pull a little bit on the knees and then set yourself up to that arch spine, maybe a little more arched than a moment ago, and then alternate. So this rhythm can have the feet closer or farther away. So that depends on your back and your knees. So rather than having this focused on, oh, how does this look? Explore the range of movement, especially if it feels a little bit awkward as far as your ability to sit tall. So work on the movement of the spine, reaching the chest forward, lifting the heart, and then hollowing through the center, feel the abdomen have a little bit of a squish. But as you come forward, squeeze into the prop between the knees. And as you move back, relax that grip. Last time, coming forward and shifting, Take a belt behind you, hold on to that supportive width of a strap. And as you grab a hold, this is where you might scoot your feet a little forward and maintain like about a 40% pressure in onto that object between the knees, squeezing in and see if you can motion your arms back and down, right? Versus trying to pump the arms behind you and gripping your shoulders. I want you to try to Reserve the moment here to reach back, but also angle downwards with your hands holding your belt. So feel where the shoulders are in motion and equalizing that awareness in both sides of the chest. Let go of your belt, but keep it easy reach nearby. And I want you to take your a uh, ball or block away, and you're going to position your leg specifically so that the right leg points out to the side, so it is kind of kitty corner from your hip. The left foot is reaching towards the right thigh, but you're going to put a block narrow between. Now, it could be the block could be like this high. It could be flat. I have a tendency to go with it so my whole foot touches it. 
but you have that block so that it is a spacer for your back muscles, okay? So as you reach out through that right leg, you're gonna reach the left arm up, bend the elbow, point the elbow towards the ceiling, and then bring your right hand over to that left elbow and give it a little direction back, okay? And be careful on the intensity. If you practice this on a regular basis, the tricep does get looser, right? It has less stiffness, which helps in your neck. So we're trying to work with loosening up around the back of the arm, this whole relationship in the upper arms. And then be simple. We're gonna bring that left arm across the chest so it's the top arm. Reach the right arm under, scoop up the left arm, almost like you give yourself a hug and intertwine the arms into this arm twist and lift them up. The key is to lift them up. Okay, now take a scan of the feeling in the legs. Is the left knee okay? It may be kind of buoyant, lifted up. So we're gonna take some focus into pressing through the right heel, lifting through the elbows, that's right and left side, and then lower them down and unwind the arms. And we'll take a block under the left knee and a sandbag on the top of the left thigh. If you got some sort of weight, place it on the left leg and get a feel here when you're centering this next pose that even though this turn to the left is part of the movement all the way into the tricep, I want you to start turning the navel zone forward, the navel zone, and then take a belt in your left hand. Make sure there's plenty of, of extra belt that's gonna be hanging off of your hand holding it and then reach that belt behind you. Okay, kind of notice when you hold onto the belt, like you tug it, do you have your palm in? Do you have your palm out or your wrist up? Feel if you can get your palm so it faces basically inwards. And, and then we'll take the right hand back and grasp the belt anywhere that the left hand is holding, that's important. But grasp the belt anywhere energy-wise, intensity that still gives you a feel of the stretch of the left back arm, and that's it, right? So we're not gonna focus on, oh, how, how close my hands could get. I want you to work on this simple, and you could take breaks and push back your left elbow a little bit, but keep it in line so that the neck feels like it has some centering. The right hand holds onto the belt, be sure you're holding the part of the belt that the, I know it seems like they're both the same, but truly that the left hand is holding. And then we start to lift the chest. Okay, now as your left hand is stretching up, reach up with that left arm, give some traction, holding onto the belt with the right hand. And then as you, Relax your grip with the left hand on the belt. I want you to actually turn to your left. So I've got my belt out here and it just gives me direction. I'm not gonna be making it more difficult on my arm with a belt. So when you let go of your belt entirely, bring your right hand to the left leg, either knee or just above. And then when you hold on to that leg, I want you to really work on that expansiveness back with your arm to maybe the blanket, which might be fingertips. And then as you turn through the waistband, yeah, keep that perspective on your personal experience with the ribs. Like I mentioned at the beginning, this is a little bit of a technical beginning for our body before we lay into the very, very wide span poses. So feel the ribs twist, breathing with some dedication to the endurance here of this position, trying to stay with that turn. What gets difficult might be your strength in your arms. It might be more arms than the core. And then as you unwind, we're gonna take the body line. So navel zone forward. I guess this is called navel zone forward practice in the beginning. Take the block out from the right side. 
and then place the right foot forward. You choose if you want to use your sand for this one. You could take it off entirely. What I like is to move it to the right leg. And then I take my blocks and lean forward. If you have a ball, you could put that under the left knee so you have a little bit more ease. And as you start to shift your hands on the blocks in front of you, feel that opportunity for the movement of the spine like we began the session with, that rounded and gently arching of the spine. Doesn't have to be ultra expressive, but you might find some subtle movement will feel useful to ease your back. And sometimes not till you're done with practice. Do these things count? I know. But we might work for a moment here with that alternating perspective of the ribs moving here. And then as you come into a stillness, which could be important to you, centering your hands on blocks that are of the height that you find efficient for the pose. So likely lower for some of us, keep it higher for some. And this would be a pose where if you do find it's really touchy in your back to get this far forward, you could do this with a, like a, a chair in front of you or a stool. So you might have one of those around just because it's easy to do that at a home practice. So with a few more moments, feel the back of the hip on that right side. Okay, now we'll take our block with the left hand and you're gonna reach it out to the left side flat and then stretch the right arm over the side of the face. So it's a turn of the rib cage. You're trying to actually flow the ribs. So the thick back ribs spiral to the right and feel that counter spin and reach the right arm continuously over the side of the face. Breathe. And then as we come up, we turn our core forward and we change sides. So left leg stretches out. We pull that right foot to park next to the left leg and we put a block. Insert that between the two. The likelihood of your hyperextended possibilities of this left knee probably are shortening if you have this block, not under the knee, but right in, in center of this left thigh. So feel that sensitivity of the leg trying to do the right thing when it's extended and there's something next to it holding it responsible. So when I'm here in this position, this time we'll just keep that same bag there because it was sort of intended last time, but of course, forgetfulness happens. Okay, so I have my block this time and we'll take our arms up over with the block between the hands. Now, if you need something under your right knee, just put something there. So maybe you need a ball. You can use the block in a second there if you prefer that. Bend your elbows. Okay, and feel, feel the difference in the rib cage. You got no choice but to feel, but, and, and let your arms be whatever they're gonna be. If they push out and kind of open so you can kind of see them in your peripheral vision instead of being too corrective, okay? Now, as your elbows kind of scoop in a little bit, feel that position of the arms squeezing in like you have your elbows, like an element an helmet helmet. Okay, now as the block is back, bring your arms straight up. It loads the tricep. Okay, so now I put that block down and I bring the right elbow up, hold that elbow tip with the left hand, just for a few moments this time. And then cross that right arm in front of the chest, keep the left arm under, intertwine and feel when you lift up your arms that there is a reason in your back to do this. It's not just a arm tangler, <laughs> it's an arm tangler pose, but it's also a spacing and opener for your back without uh, rounding your back. Right? Some of us might think, oh, ease my back round. But here we are working with our postural 
presence in the arms. Okay, good. So unwind, take a belt, hold on to that belt with your right hand, and reach the left hand back to hold on to the belt piece that is completely connected. All right, takes me a second. Maybe that's not a confusion on your part of experiencing the posture, but in this pose called Gomukhasana, so as we have the right elbow up, I'm trying to keep that tricep long. I'm not worried about getting my arm too close to my head, but I do want to focus on pulling with that left hand a bit and then encourage your core piece to assert lifting. Okay. Now, twisting to the right immediately might be a little much for our bones right now. So get a feel of that elbow lift and then slide the right hand up on the belt. Give yourself a little bit of slack. Feel that experience of the tricep. And then let that left hand slide down and twist to your right. Let go of the belt right away. Left hand to the right leg, okay? And then as you turn, you're gonna feel that rotation from your lower core, sweeping the lungs in the upper lobes of the lungs, right? So get the thick back ribs to turn. Try to keep that left foot so the toes are up and it's not pivoting in. And do the best that you can using your right foot against the block to reinforce that pelvic floor control. I know it's a good pose for that. So try to use your block between, you know, one foot and one thigh off and on to work with that. It's automatic you establish that when you place the block there. Okay, now when you come back in towards the central station, we take that left leg, we cross it in front of the right, we move our blocks around perhaps, our sand moves over to the left leg, and then when we're here, feel when your hands interlace at the roots, the palms lift up, inhale, ribs up. Try to feel like, is that happening or is it just you're kind of following some sort of a exercise program? Feel where the ribs move in and up, spine in and up. And then as you move your hands down to your legs, you're gonna lean forwards and use your blocks below your hands in just the right amount of height. Okay, so we've got the palms in this final seated position, right? We're kind of etching into our back muscles and the back of the hip. And as you're leaning down, I'm gonna give you this choice of stay with the energy of going forward or Take the block to the right sooner and stretch that left arm over the side or bring it behind your back. But feel the leaning track of the ribs and as they motion to the side wave of sensation, I imagine that your ribs can feel that circulation and maybe your hip. Okay, a few more moments, feel the waist, Breathe, it only helps. Very good, so the left arm is now behind us. If you joined us in this position to the side, we start to come back up. And this time, kind of keep it simple. Well, Unwind that prop pack, packing that you have on your body. And we're gonna uncross through the legs. And then as we put our seat in front of our bolster, I want you to add a block under your pelvis, lift up your hips, slide a flat block under the back of your pelvis. And then as you guide yourself back, where is your belt? <laughs> you might get stuck with it under your, your, um, your upper back. So slide that out so it's accessible for you. And as you guide back your ribs, they'll probably be especially 
happy to be in this version of awareness compared to where you just were. Right now you can lay down, you can feel all the cycles of circulation come together. Add the sand across the ribs, right where they intersect, right? So they're right below the sternum. Some of us might decide in this version today, and this is up to you to have your sand on the top of your thighs. So now let's carry our bones into this position. We reach the heels down, we have the block under us. And you, if you feel your, your uh, sides of your hips, you'll notice this whole area, well, it depends on your flesh and all that, but it kind of guides down, it sloughs down. So you want that to slough down, even if you kind of scratch it. And have the legs so they're at a wide enough setting that your back can compute with softening, okay? Some of us will have our feet closer and some will have them wider out, right? And luckily you're not in such a comparative mode at home, right? You're focusing in what your needs are. So when I put the belt into my hands and reach overhead, I'm gonna be kind of feeling if my head needs two blankets or if I wanna get rid of one. I want you to feel that your head is comfortable and sensations in the neck and the upper back. So if a little bit of height under your head feels good for you, for your circulation and your nervous system, that's another issue as well. Rest your eyes, feel what's underneath you as a support, and gather your attention on the even rhythm of your breath. The hold on your belt should be mild. So it's bringing just the right amount of spacing in the shoulders. And then simply let go of that grip of your belt and take the arms as they spread open. And you can explore for a few more seconds here, this experience of balance and evenness. If your knees are really pressing back and down and you notice that's uncomfortable in your knees, then you would soften the knees by bending the knees a little bit deeper and then maybe have your feet scoot downwards, but the knees stay bending. You can rest the knees together in TP pose as well. So you get to decide on the knee experience. Okay, but that filling of the ribs, I'm liking this focus to be primarily about the core chamber gradually opening. So we're gonna add side sage in the next moment, we're gonna go pretty quickly into it. So kind of feel how we monitor this midsection, the kind of the rib section down to the lower back. So as the knees are all going to bend, we're gonna slide our feet towards our seat. Feel how the ribs move with your inhale. Take a deep breath, strengthen the diaphragm. And with your exhalation, so it almost has a vocalness to it that's um, different when you have sand, right? If you have weight on your ribs, it's a differing intensity for emptying the lungs. It's a weight bearing object for them. You know, as you move the sand aside, we'll take side sage. We've all been in this practice. So we know to move our block. We know to roll and stay attached to your prop. So if you're really rolling in and you'll feel that waistline center, the whole left side layer, a block or a ball is on the inside of that right leg. If you find you do not identify with that as a necessary position, Prop, it's okay. You might feel fine with your legs sweeping back. It's up to you. So when I lean into the side, we have the prop set up specifically today. So you do keep the spacing between the arm uh, center of the bolster and the blankets. 
And then as you add on the weight to the side body, feel where the weight on the bones is particularly slightly breath challenging. And so if it's a hip part, that's okay. If you've got two sandbags, you might be adding one after your hip. But as you have that hip part, it still does enhance that tracking, or you could say um, the pathway, right, to clear in the side. The left knee is close to the bolster. And then that right arm probably needs a block huh, overhead. So you can add that block to that underneath your right hand up to you. So the weight is leaning into your bolster and just simply anything that's under you, even your head, even the rib cage. Yep. Allow the weight of the side to feel centered. And if a little bit of rocking side to side is therapeutic for you, taking that experience. Now, if your eyes are closed, can you sense the waist and its ability to reach on both sides, the hip, and the arm, even if that right arm is not overhead entirely for you. So if it's a little challenge and you're bending your elbow or you have your right hand closer to your left hand than overhead, that might be useful. Yeah, so finding that waist to lengthen. Now with the waist in its side expression, if your right leg is on a ball, it's going to be something where you're working with the, the waist wiggling a little bit side to side, like you're trying to wag your tail. So you're gonna shift the hips from left towards right, which is the side you're opening. Okay, and we're gonna layer into this right hip and also the left in, for the most part. When you lower your left, right hand down to the blanket, you're going to feel your body weight twist into the left. And then as you start to come up, you're going to go with that start up. So you're going to lift, put the elbow down, move your sand. And I want you to take your body shape in towards Baddha Konasana, supine. So what we'll have is this right hip is going to position next to the left, so they're kind of stacked and kind of notice this is more of a closed hip position, right? So when I push to come up, the legs slide back and forth because that's what legs do. But as you turn your bolster, pivot it up onto your blankets and then take a belt and the block if it's overhead and we'll get right in towards the seated bound angle. So we have our belt, we're gonna already go into buckling it together. I would put your blocks under the legs immediately so that there's not any suffering going on as much into the knee or the low back when you're trying to hold them up. Now this loop's a little too small for me to fit through, but you're gonna to want to widen that loop up. Maybe for my cat it would work, but not me. Um, place the belt overhead. I don't think the cats would like this. Um, they would run off with it probably. Place it overhead and as you bring your feet to be supported by the belt, okay, I want you to scoop up your feet with your belt and then as you feel it kind of tug onto them, you're going to lower your belt at the back of the waistline. So you kind of slide it down to the low back waist. And then as you start to guide yourself back, be sure your buckle's close to you, to your hip. Yeah, that's essential. And as I slide back, I'm gonna lift up my blocks a little bit higher under my legs so that the direct balance right now is in my stomach. So you might do a little bit of kind of diving forward with your back stretching. And then as you come back, noticing that elongating the spine is this movement, not this movement. Okay, even though we kind of think, oh, relieve my back. So when you center up, 
Bring your hands to your bolster so it's centered. And then as you guide back, you could add sand. If you have many sandbags, you could add them to your inner thighs, one on each. You could actually have one on your feet. Um, if you want to toss it over your feet right now. But for the most part, we're going to take the arms so that they have a semblance of balance with the fingers. So interlace the hands or the fingers and turn them slowly back behind you. No requirement to put sand on yourself if you don't want to. You can stay totally free of the weight, but feel the cycle of circulation now into your hips that if you notice one side has a little more opening from the last pose, the right hip, the very front of the hip, it's likely to have some, even though it could be a small amount. And as you're feeling that reach with both arms, express that arch through the spine. Let your eyes close. Change the arm position so that you're either holding your elbows and keep in mind, this will mean we have to change the crossing in about a minute, or you're going to let your arms lower down beside you. So either is recommended depending on how it senses. Now we don't have a blanket under our head so easily here to adjust the neck, but this is one thing um, we might wanna add in our home practice props is just a towel. You know, it can be a regular bath towel, not too big though. So, because they're really adjustable for things like the neck or a small, you can get a couple towels. Might be good for some of these things we'll do for the neck coming up. Not right now, but coming up, I want to work on more neck, neck stuff. So we'll need something else besides a big bulky blanket. Now, when you feel your elbows down, if your arms are crossing, change the crossing. Those that have decided I'm done with that, my arms are down. Relax your fingers so that they naturally curl. And notice if the hands are similar experience around the wrist, if that gentle curl of the fingers is balanced. You don't have to look at your fingers to see, but you can generally have a sense of the muscular pull in your arms. So feel the breath as it stretches the body. Use the breath as a stretching tool. If you want to deepen the hip stretch, let the blocks go lower or remove them entirely now. So it's up to you. If you feel like your belt is holding you and it's very low in the back of the waist, you might be seasoned and also feel like it's, even though a seasoned practitioner doesn't mean that they're more flexible, not at, at all. So you might find intelligence as if the blocks are just a little bit farther out, just under the knee line, and it's still holding your legs up, right? But you want your pelvis to feel like it's the most weighted piece of you as far as what's underneath the belly button downwards versus your knees on the floor. So you still want to feel your pelvis weighted. Okay, so as we take a feet pressure position, push in with your feet. Okay, try to get the inner thighs to do the awareness. I know this is an issue we have sometimes with the knees is how we push our feet together. If I push and I'm really pushing the little toe side a lot, which is just kind of a evolutionary habit because of how we stand, right, on our feet, we're going to have a little more on the outer side for many of us. So feel your feet push. And now I want you to unbuckle. And if you've got sand on, you're going to have to start shuffling that off any second. And then as you unbuckle, you're going to bring your knees to point up and Place the feet so they scoot out a little wider, maybe just as wide as your mat is fine. And then let the knees rest in teepee pose, okay? So me to get my knees to, towards each other is actually a little challenging with my feet parallel. So if I pivot the toes in, 
it happens. Okay, so that's going to be feeling the inner line of your foot better. So you could spread the toes out here. You can do a little bit of toe gymnastics if you feel like it. Okay. I know if you have those toe socks on, you, you can do your toe gymnastics a little easier. So where you feel that rest down into your pelvis, if anyone feels a stretch in the legs here, you can add in a windshield wiper version, which is knees are going to go side to side. But before we get to the side stage on the other side, take some windshield wipers motion, okay? and feel where the spine is arching up from the bolster. Right? You have a little bit of that lift and shoulders squeeze back towards the bolster. Use your props right, to enhance your circulation. And then take your weight over to your right hip. Be kindful as you rotate. And arms help you get up. That's the key, arms help you get up. So as you turn, you're going to take the bolster and pivot. If you're having a knee issue right now, right immediately, put a block or a ball on the inside of that left leg so it's not going to be turning in and pressurizing that inner, um, inner, inner ligament. So we have our bolster next to us. Now when I come down to the side, this bolster is only as supportive as I let my body weight just kind of drop into it. So consider that you might like to kind of let your armpit chest kind of flash, you know, that's kind of part of this one is flashing the armpit chest. But if you have your, your rib center down to start, that might work to your benefit to play with that motion. Again, this is one where the block overhead can be useful and a sandbag on the side can also be a helpful addition so that you become more grounded and meditative in the position, right? So the sandbag can go across or lengthwise on the side. Yeah, and come on in, good. That's nice, so get a feel of this waist reaching and the arm connector to something that it can touch to whether it's the right arm below or it's overhead, up to your situation. You can kind of play with getting your hip under you on that right leg and getting the knee closer to your bolster. And then as you feel these creative paths with your body arching and lengthening, you might come into the shape and find some ease. Some places where it's easeful and it's creating a concentration in your body. And then that brings the mind to a restorative balance. So taking the moments here, breathing slow. Feel the costal rhythm, the ribs expand and relax, expanding and relaxing, good. Now noticing how the ribs have this detail here. You can continue this detail when you get upside down next. So if this is obvious that your ribs are expansive, how about kind of having a little bit of a memory card of this one, the side stretch. And I want you to continue that exploration even when you're on your back with your legs up. So what we're gonna do, since this is kind of an intellectual sequence of things today, um, you're gonna start to lower that left arm so it's either down to the right arm or it's reaching to the sand. And as you slide off the sand, you're going to feel where the bones roll. Now, last time I had this mention of the hip, right? It was going into a certain pose. This time we're gonna reverse the, the flow in the legs. So I would encourage you to let, visualize like your spine, everything kind of wrapping itself 
into a little ball of yarn here. So you're going to roll to the right and then make that ball of yarn and come up. Okay. So I come up and the blankets, I take away one. I keep one blanket behind me and I move my props around. So basically, as I come around here, I have a seat on my bolster. I lost my ball across the room. <laughs> okay, have a seat on your bolster. And then as you come back, I think this is the version I'm hoping for. Okay, have all, all your props nearby. As you come back, you want to have the legs in this, what is it, that upward facing forward bend, right? So I have my legs that kind of kick up, but the key is like this, this hip space is elevated. I was gonna say elevated, <laughs> elevated. Okay, hip, hip weight is on the bolster. There is the rule of the rib and an inversion, right? On a bolster. So I wanna have a little bit of, like a lot of myself on this bolster. I don't want to hang off the other side where, you know, my seat is on the ground. It's not that type of arch, but it is a, it's a breathing pose, right, for the lungs. So when you swing the legs to lift up, take a few moments of that, like lift and lower the feet. If you ever do um, things like plow pose, that's oftentimes an instruction to do that swinging, but we're not going to, we're not going to get the neck in that position, so don't worry. But get the feel of that motion of the legs. And then I want you to let the legs swing a little bit back so that the arch of the lower back is obvious. It's probably pretty cozy for most of you. I'm hoping, it doesn't hurt. It's getting some extra stretch. So feel that and let the knees bend so that you find that fulcrum of balance with the lift and the movement of the knees towards your chest. So now this doesn't mean we're trying to put our feet over our head. But I want you to get a feel of this back stretching. We're going to move into legs up, beat burrito karate with sand on the feet. Some of you will use sand, some will use a belt. I'm aware of the differences here with the props. So those that are going to use that sand are going to get a feel of this fullness of the reach of the back muscles, including the hamstrings. As the knees bend, Get a feel of the back length and then take a sandbag, okay? If you're not using the sand, I'll get to you in just a sec, but keep the momentum going with the knees bending. Um, if you're not using sand, you can put a belt under your feet. So it's pretty much the same decision process with props. But as I put my, my feet to press up into that sand, I'm gonna to try to keep my bolster. So if it starts to slide away, grab the sides of it and then push your feet up and let the legs kind of this drizzle. This, this could be called lymph drizzle. I don't know if I could remember that. Okay, write it down. So get a feel of the foot flex and then as you flex through your feet, if you have a belt, you're holding it with your hands, okay? So if you're not with, your, with sand, just keep it sand though. So feel that defining pelvic pressure on the bolster. And then when you're reaching your arms open out to a T, just to the shape of straight out to the sides, just open. Feel if your legs can go from wavering back and forth to a still point. So feel when your feet flex, feel when your shoulders press back a little bit. And then when you keep that flexing of your feet, can you spatially rest your eyes, rest your face? and feeling the awareness that cycles internally. So this is an internalizing shape. If it's fairly demanding on your leg muscles, then take a little bit of a easeful bend of the knees. And you can always remove your sand and you can put a belt around the feet if that feels like a more useful prop for you.
So how much air you get into the lungs depends on the movement of the ribs. So I try to encourage you to bring your feet enough forward that you feel a little bit of kind of challenge, right, in your lower, lower core pit. So if I bring my feet a little forwards, I can feel some subtle connection into the energy center in the lower core. So you're trying to find a way to use your practice so the energy flows through the body well, right? The, the prana flows well. That's the key for this practice. Not just your breath, but the circulation through the body. So as you soften your knees, the issue of getting the sand to move in the, with everything comfortable could be apparent right now, but you might let your, your hands come down enough so it won't affect your hands, but you might trust moving your sand and dropping it overhead. You might get a feeling of bending your knees, stretching your back, stretching your back all the way into strengthening your rear muscles. And then when I change this time, I want you to push your feet up and take a moment, we are gonna spend an extra moment here on this one. I did forget one thing I wanted to add for our muscle behavior. And I'm not gonna add it now because it will just take you longer in the pose, but something to keep in mind when you're doing legs up is, you gonna find your belt. If you already have your belt, you're already set. But is um, when you're doing legs up in the middle of the room, you, you tend to use a lot of muscle tension, right? To hold the legs up. So one way that you can calm that down and make it a little more restorative is to get a belt around your legs and that will hold the muscles and kind of make it so you're, it's like, I know you're more than a piece of furniture right now. I don't mean it like that, but you're more of an object. <laughs> like your legs are in this position and balanced and supported. And you might be surprised if the belt is high on the legs how that kind of settles you, your muscles. They don't quiver as much. And you might get really cold in your feet though, quicker, right? Because the blood flow changes, it all moves to the organs much quicker. Um, so you might notice these, these intensities that change. And so just something to keep in mind if you practice. If you're at the wall, you can also use the belt, but it's not as important as in the middle. So I'll try to be better about that. So bend your knees. Always learning more. And then toss your sand. And as you feel the knees in that bending position, we're gonna get a belt and we're gonna place it unbuckled under your right foot. And lengthen this left leg, reach the left thigh forward, hold the leg above the floor though. Yes, I know the core recruit. Core recruiters, okay. So hold on to that right, um, the right leg position straight up. Um, I guess moving it back is fine. Right? If I pull my leg a little back, that's helpful. Feel the hands as high up on the belt as you can reach them. Yeah, work your back a little bit here. Be sure your head is on a blanket. Okay. Now the left foot as it lowers to the floor, I want you to try to reach further with that left foot. You know, as if it's trying to reach across the room, right? You're trying to get to that wall. So pull, breathe. You know, as I hold the belt with the left hand, left foot relaxes, cross the right leg to the left. Keep it very simple through the side, the skin and the side of the right leg. I feel if you can push into your right foot as if you're pushing a little bit downstream with that position of holding onto your belt with your left hand, and I have a block under my left arm right now. It just was there, so it's kind of nice to have it, to be honest. Um, so it helps me from gripping in my shoulder. So you might add a, a prop. It might not be useful to you, 
but the outer left foot, right, is, is resting. And you'll notice this is an, a pose shape that we take with the bolster off into the side, which we are going to do momentarily. But I want you to try to energize your foot here. So push into your belt. Try to straighten out the right leg, almost. It's not a knee issue as much as if the leg was straight above when you try to straighten it because there's so much hip involvement. Now, put your right hand to the, the right hip so you get a feel of this outer hip, this iliac here, this connection to the hip. And I want you to connect to that space and try to keep that moving downwards away from you. So you're gonna feel that sensation of the hip. I think you already do. And then bend the right knee and keep that, that um, intensity with the left hand holding the belt. Bring the leg back in center and switch left foot up into the belt. Hands are as high up on the belt as you can reach. Right foot is off the floor. And so keep it away from the ground. Pull the left leg back. So monitor that influence of circulation through the leg, reach through the heel, good sensation, lots of feet in the air. <laughs> so when you feel your right foot above the ground, can you balance the back of the pelvis? Feel that left leg drawing back. I'm not doing as good of a job as I can to get my arms higher, but you might notice that does affect the connection in your shoulders. It kind of keeps it more comfortable when you're broadening your workload in your back. Also stretches the upper back. And then lower the right foot and connect to what happens in your neck here. So as you close off the belt on my left foot comes a little forward. It gives, I give it some slack through the leg. And then as I turn, my head to the left and then move my left leg over to the right. I stretch the left arm open and feel that this bolster is kind of pinning your sacroiliac space to, to keeping it all levelized. So you'll notice you really have to stay in the boundaries when you use the bolster under your back. You can't get too wild and crazy. So as your head rolls left, I try to let my head actually turn to the left more than it facing towards the ceiling. And then feel that left foot push downstream with that belt. And feel the connectors through the hip. Now the left knee may bend a little bit you may tend to straighten the leg. You know, as you work your weight of your waist back into center, we're going to shift it quite a bit when we move off the bolster. So when you bend your left knee, this time we'll bend it and then we'll come back center because we're going to take our belt completely off. And then as we bring our knees to our chest, Take a block or ball between the knees, whatever is kind of easiest to grab right now. They're both fine. The block is at its most narrow setting. The ball has no choices. <laughs> it's going to be either uh, just a ball between. So hands on bolster, knees draw in. Just enough, not too much to knock you out with the object between them, but knees draw towards you. And then you're going to push your bolster away from under the back of, or the pack of the pelvis. And as it guides down, I like to milk this one where I go really slow and I can feel the back touch down and then feel how the back has zero arch now. So when we push down to the bolster with our fingertip reach, bring your feet on top. And then as you lower down your um, arms by your sides, palms open, and then dig your heels into that bolster and push and lift up your pelvis just a tiny bit off the floor, okay? And now feel as you lift your hips up a little bit higher and a little bit higher, you wanna go slowly. Yeah, and if you can see, well, some of you might be able to see how your posture is on your screen, but 
you might focus a bit here on, you want the bolster far enough away that you're using your glute muscles a lot. You don't want it too close because that can be a little harsh on the knees. So the farther away is an ideal perspective. But as you lift up your hips, and notice if you had something under your pelvis, it would hold them up, but we're going to work on requiring our hip flexors in this very good place for the hip flexors to be position. Okay, and see if you can keep some endurance on this one. Stay with the hips up. You can interlace your fingers underneath your buttocks, so hands are together in a little bit of a fist. And then as I reach with my fist forward toward the bolster, that's kind of limited for my shoulders. So you might be able to roll your shoulder down and in. If that is positive for your shoulders, keep with it. If it's not, you let go of your grip of your hands. Sometimes it's good for you, sometimes it isn't. We all are very individualized on that. Okay, now once the fatigue is setting in a little further, I want you to let go of the, the clasp and then bring your hands to your hips and get a feeling of lifting them up, lifting them up, giving them some direction. Fatigue still sets in. And bring your arms overhead. Your blanket could be there or not, you choose and arms overhead as your spine goes down, inch through the spine. Okay, now get a feel of the back muscles centered there. And I want you to bring your hands to move the block and then place the, the bolster to the right side of your mat. So kick it over to the right. And as I put my, my feet on the floor now, about hips distance, not too much wider, I want you to place your block again between the knees or your ball, whichever you want. Actually higher up, so it's between the thighs, okay? So my feet push and let your feet press as your hands are on your thigh lids. And as you start to lift up, can you try to get your pelvis to kind of pop up isn't really the right word, but you want it to go straight up versus trying to keep things pushing to the knees. So think go straight up with your hips. Don't force anything on your knees. They have enough to do. And then I want that block, that block or ball to be so that you can feel that item between the thighs. That's key. So your thighs have to work. It'll feel different than the knees. So it might be a little awkward to apply that position of the prop. But make sure it's almost on the upper inner adductor where it doesn't like to be nagged. Okay? It's kind of sensitive there. So lift up your hips, bring your hands to the floor, palms down, and then try to lift up your hips straight towards the ceiling. If your inner thighs are a little sore from this, they're a little tight right now, they feel that, simply notice if your pressure on the inner leg is sensitive. And then lift up your heels, okay? Lower your spine. And then as you scoop in your knees, you're going to remove the block and then cross that left leg over to the bolster. Right leg down, pivot your waist so that left leg crosses to the bolster on top of it. And then add some sand to this outer left hip. Sandbag could be overhead. You could have dropped it overhead a while ago. So you're gonna add your sand to the outer left leg. This should be a pretty well-rounded sequence we're getting through. So kind of everything, everything but the kitchen sink here. So cross it over and feel how the lower tummy is kind of persuaded to go with the leg. It kind of goes along with the program. So I want you to try to get your left arm to be open, whether it's a little down and not too happy to stretch out, that's possible. But I want you to get a feel of this left arm touching down, whether again, it's close to you or distant, so that the abdominal spacing can start to cycle up upper ribs. Right hand anywhere feels comfortable, on the leg, spreading out to the right side, however. And come into this hip crossover, revolved belly pose. Rest your eyes. And let this kind of final spinal that we're flowing through be, be very intense, right? The final parts of the practice. Still be 
all fairly potent. So eyes resting, mind breathing. Interesting thought, mind breathing, a breathing mind. Now, if the waist feels pretty comfy, it has a little twist, but it's a nice revolved belly pose. See if you can keep that when we move to windshield wiper so that the ability to comfortably relax in that core chamber, but also regulate movement. So these habits become actually something that are a treat to do, not like an obstacle to get through as far as practice. So that when you move your sand aside, you're gonna let your legs pattern so that your right leg moves up beside your left leg and then it helps your left leg come back to center. And then you windshield wipe with the knee side to side. This is where if some of you have one of those squishy balls that you can kind of massage under your back, you might add it. So some of us are gonna go feet wide on the mat, windshield wiper side to side. And some might go ahead and push down to your feet wide and lift up your rear and put the ball under the one buttock at a time and massage from the glute media. So it would be center upper back of your one buttock at a time and really let the body weight and movement massage into that, the glutes into the rear and then that affects the hip. Or you're gonna be knees side to side. Yeah, and if you do side to side, if you decide side to side, go slower and feel if you can let that outer track of your hip receive that circulation all the way up into the ribs. So a few more moments. So we get time for those that are massaging their glutes to get each one. Okay, so if you're using that ball, you know, place it to the other glute. And you don't want to go too low on the rear, right? Because it doesn't have a lot of effectiveness unless it's higher up where it relates around to the lateral rotator. So even if you decide, oh, that's just not enough, and you want to kind of roll to your side and massage the outside of the, the lateral part of the hip, that's fine. Okay. All right. So now we change the crossover. We lower down <clears throat> off of anything. Underneath us, we stretch the left leg, and as we kind of swing the right leg over to that bolster, you want to get a feel of your back muscles, but also your, well, your leg helps you swing it over, but it is kind of the connection of the, the pelvis and the spine strength together. So just playing with rolling around is a good habit. The, tummy time and all that stuff, kind of crawling around and rolling on your back and to your side is probably good for us. Um, good for our, our wiring, right? Our movement wiring in our body, how we're wired. So putting that sand on the exterior right hip and then let things flow internally rather than having to you know, look in the screen and be exact, which we all try for, clearly. That's happening sometimes. But feel if you can get the directional movement of the rib cage to the right. And if that right shoulder is achy to do this, like you go, oh, I can do it, but it kind of hurts. You know, you might want to find a fundamental uh, decision when you get to those realities to find something that's a little easier to be in, a little bit under the intensity. See if you can find that first. And then be turning your head to the right and let your arms find where they're comfortable. It might just take a few moments of getting that right arm downwards and relaxed. Then you could try it back open. You know, keep in mind movement is key. So like continuing and trying things over and over, 
that's where the flexibility could, you could jinx it a little bit into those joints. Joint jinxing. It's just as interesting as lymph drizzle, or was it drizzle lymph? I don't know which. So head relaxing, eyes quieting. Breathe slow. Feel the belly, move with the breath. Okay, now as we start to come out of this crossover, what I'm gonna have us do is we're gonna eventually get up and take a few moments with hands, knees, so work with kind of a full body, and which actually creates some resistance, right? And some of it's resistance to get into it. So no one's required to. You can always do some other activity pattern that feels comfortable or modify a little bit, but it's part of it's gonna be weight bearing is how we travel into this poses. So when you roll to your left, if you want to bring your knees in the center and roll up, that's okay. Or you can keep going towards your left. And then we're going to roll our hip into grabbing our blanket behind us and slide it into the center of our mat. And then there's a science to getting into these really smoothly, I think. So then you bring your feet back and you come around to table. We got our bolster, it's right in the front and center. We won't use it the whole time, but we'll have it for a little bit of the pick up, thing, pick up plan for the core. So when you have your hands under your shoulders, see if you can reach your ribs forward into this upper dog. And then as you lower down your ribs, can you bring your arms beside you, back beside you in locust pose? and really work with that sense of, ooh, of core reach, right? And I think core length would not be accurate because not many of us feel like we're getting longer in this, but we're working our way into the shoulders moving back, okay? So as your hands are gonna lower down, your fingers open, so no sphinx pose right now, hands are open, now, when you bring your elbows back, not so much into your ribs, although that's tempting um, instruction, I want you to feel the elbows back and then gradually lift so that you're strengthening your spine, but you're not hurting it. So one thing to know about back bends is that if I force my weight into my hands to get myself higher, not only does it bother my wrists sometimes, or some of you might, but it's also possibly not necessarily damaging, but it could be more to your back. So you only want to do what you honestly can do. So if you can't lift up very high, you can't lift up very high. You're not, that's not your strength. So you work with these phases of moving up. And then I want you to just lower down and put your hands forward, lower your forehead. So your chin is probably on the edge of the bolster. Some of you are longer and your head might be on your hands. You have to adjust your chest sometimes to make this a little more comfortable. But in crocodile pose, my back is stretching open and I use my bolster to help support me. So spend a few moments just the focus of your back relaxed. Feel the knees separating. Even these still quiet poses are an important part of the whole plan. And now feeling that nourishment in the spine before you come up and you lift your head and all those things, I want you to notice your abdomen and the parts of it that touch the bolster now. So when you consider coming up and you're moving your weight into your rib cage and you feel sometimes the pulse in the belly center, try to let your pelvis push down, the front of your pelvis, let the pelvic plate push down. You're going to let that press so you have more power in the pelvis than you do in some of these other smaller spaces that get tight. So use that pelvis pressure to move forward, I mean, downwards into the bolster. And then can you bring your hands 
the sides, you open your fingers, let your toes hook under. And then when you bring your elbows out, then you come up. So the elbows go out and then you come up and then move back to table. And then as you push back to downward dog, stretch out through the legs, pedal through the feet. So you get a feeling of alternating, bending your knees and the circulation all the way from your spine base to your top of your head. So feel the reach of the feet separating. Good. You can take your feet out a little bit farther, widen through the stance if you prefer, but balance the energy of your legs right now. Feel the reach back into your heels. Feel it so much that when you bend your knees and you try to keep them apart, right? So they're not knocking towards each other. And as you walk back to your Blanket with your hands striding you back. I want you to pick up your feet so they actually step up on your blanket. Toes are up, heels are down. Now you can either be here with your hands on your bolster, head down with the brain to the floor. You can also hold your bolster, tip it up and bring it forward. Some people find this better for their blood pressure to have the bolster, something that they're holding onto and there's no requirement that your feet are on the blanket. If you want to have them off the blanket, if it's too much extra stuff, just, just change it up for yourself. Nice, good. So feel when that length is through the back leg all the way up to your sitting bone, and then that reach through the arms. Let the weight of your head center between them. Breathing. Okay, now those that have the bolster, you're gonna lower that down. And then we're going to start to shift our feet off of the blanket, but keep the forward fold for a moment. Feel the feet, or feel actually the leg part, so they have some widening to catch your ribs. Like kind of the rib basket lowers down towards the knees. And then you're gonna hold your elbows. And so you're in this forward fold, this inversion. And that way that pulls you down so the head goes below the heart. If this is uncomfortable for you, remember you have alternate ideas that you can work with. You don't even have to be in this standing forward bend. You could be on hands and knees if you prefer and either reaching your hands on the bolster and head down, that could be an option. Or if your knees are safe with it, back to child's pose. This is, and the, those of us standing, this is like a standing child's pose, isn't it? Right, how the ribs kind of hold, or the legs hold the ribs. Change the arm crossing if you haven't already. You want your legs to have wide enough stance so that they actually hold the rib cage and it's supported. Okay, so with this motion of the ribs, Feel almost when you hold your elbows like you're going to kind of reach your arms forward with the hold of the elbows and kind of work the strength of your back here. Okay, so if you're feeling pretty confident and actually safe with your balance right now, let go of the elbows and bend the knees and keep the knees apart. We won't use a block, but keep them apart. Stretch your arms forward. I want you to let your weight move back into your heels when you're coming up to chair pose. So the weight is back into your heels. So you recruit the glutes and all the way up the back muscles. Interlace your fingers at the roots, push the hands forward, press down into your heels, come up to standing. And as you lift up, you're gonna keep the reach through your chest, open the elbows, hands are still together. Inhale, slow. And exhale, hands separate, and you'll come back forward and down, and we'll all meet by walking forward on our hands and sliding our knees back to the blanket and down, and move into cat pose. Round your back, chin to the chest. Really feel that hollow of the core. And inhale, arching. Okay, move your bolster across the mat in front and take the hands on top and let the hips stretch back and feel the arms extend. 
Okay, so this is one option with the hands on the bolster. The one challenge you might have is could be knees, could be shoulders, could be the neck. So if the neck is not so certain to be here another 45 seconds, you can add, sometimes a blanket is better than a block because you can mush the blanket. The block is only one height, right? So this is gonna be something you can compact, you know, press it down. So the blanket I like a lot for this, to feel the support at the, the center of the forehead and feel the arms reaching, breathing. Okay, now take the brain back up center and you can keep your blanket under your knees. You can add one under your knees or push it off to the side. And then we'll take the left knee forward and out to pigeon and the right thigh straight back. So if your version of pigeon is not this today, you can always lower onto your back and hook that left foot to the right knee. If this is okay, but you want more blanket under your hip, you can get, grab a hold of a blanket, place one more height under your left seat. But as we're here in this position with the arms, feel where you can bring your bolster in and you can bring your elbows onto the bolster or you can kind of hug into that bolster with your forehead down. Try to stay with that connectivity from the left center of the low spine, right at the sacrum. And then it connects all the way out through the glute and it wraps around through that thigh band. So that's kind of a neat shape if you can tolerate it since it's so site specific into that left upper leg. Of course, it's dependent on knees and things, right? Sometimes it's, it's actually not acceptable for everybody right, to be in the shape for the knee. So making your choice. Now when we swap out the legs, I want us to swap it out by positioning our hands under and then feel the chest move forward. So we're in more of that upright pigeon lifting up the center line of the chest, push into the hands, lift up the rib cage higher up, and then change sides, swing the right leg forward and the left leg back. So keep it simple. If it's completely unagreeable with you to be in this posed pathway, right? This, these hip poses with the knee angle. Those of you coming into it here, I just want you to know that if you're not in a pigeon pose path and you want to join, you can come back down to sitting to your blanket because this is the final little phase here. And you can sit with your um, legs so there is no knee pressure. So the legs have a separation <clears throat> and the bolster is in front and tilted up and you're leaning forward, okay? That's an option. So come into this phase so you feel the right knee open for those of us in pigeon pose. We have our elbows down and the top of the back thigh is resting. Yeah, feeling if you're a little bit tilted or wilted by now kind of getting rinsed out of these poses. Feel the top of that back thigh centering into the knee. Breathing. Now be particularly interested here in how the back motions to our sitting position like we started, right? Although we're not on the bolster sitting, we're on a lower surface. The height is lower. Even if you had a blanket, it's a little bit more compact, right? With your sitting bones pressing down. So when you come around with that left leg this time, and you were all meeting kind of in the same focus with our feet out, and the bolster straight and center in front. Take a block underneath the bolster. So my block is at the low height. And even if you can have your bolster flat and you can go forward, try to take the support so it's kind of in your 
your guts. It's kind of like a little bit of pressure into the stomach. So I actually try to get that. Um, well, we're all different heights right now as far as how we're sitting upright. Some of us are, you know, the bolster's lower, some it's a little bit higher up. So it can only go from my perception here, but I am trying to get that bol the bolster to kind of push in. And then when I lower down, my back will round to adapt so I'm more comfortable because that's the creature that, that we are trying to be a little bit more comfortable creatures. So feel if you can experience that pressure in the gut a little bit, the intra-abdominal pressure, and let your feet both flex. So you have a light lift of the feet. Now, I don't think it's really that light. I can feel them energizing, toes are up. And feel where the waist goes down and curls in your back and try to apply the connection to your bolster. That's the key. It's feeling the connection to the bolster. So our final wave in our body is going to be feeling that front core connection here, which I feel back quite a bit. And then we'll simply let our body have a little bit of elevation with our legs. So feel when the legs are grounded right now. Feel where the spine is rounded and where the weight of the head moves forward and down. Now the energy in the legs can get a little tiring. So if you relax your grip on trying to force them to do something specific, noticing what occurs in your hip joint, if anything happens, and then when I slide myself, my hands back towards the front of the bolster next to my body, I come up and then we're gonna pivot that bolster on some blocks. So I want you to take a couple blocks to the front of your mat towards your, the inside line of the feet. And then we're gonna turn the bolster so it's on the two blocks on the mid height. Okay, now when you get to this spacing, you wanna add a blanket, but roll it up. So make a pretty tight little tube of your blanket, or if it's a towel, you could add like a blanket and then a towel roll, and that might be a, pretty nice on your calves actually. Or if you have another sticky mat, that can be nice. You can actually roll that up into a tube like this and then put your blanket over the sticky mat so you have a little more height. <laughs> so don't, don't, don't let any of your yoga props at home be somewhere else when you come to class. <laughs> Get them all out. So go ahead and scoot up to your props. Turn your blanket so you have it lengthwise underneath your spine. And when you recline, you keep in mind you can have your sandbag right here. You just need your legs closer um, than you think. But when you lower back, you've got that light amount of thoracic support with your blanket lengthwise. Now, if you're tall, you might have to have the blanket so it's a little farther back so your head has a support, but it might be comfortable for you to have your head a little bit off the blanket, like you would in a bridge pose, right? So we have our head centered back and down. You might have a sandbag across the rib intersection, lengthwise or otherwise, and let the sensation of that weight be recognized whether it's on your shins or your ribs, okay? So recognize the relationship of any little weight that you've put on yourself. And if it's not gonna be a weight application, it will be the ability to ground yourself and become centered. Stretching your elbows open and your hands back. And then as your mind is in that place of Repeating the breath. Feel the sensations of its movement. Feel how it evolves on its own and the directions of the ribs can become a little more comfortable with each breath. Feeling your inhale lengthen, 
And the exhalation, one count longer than the inhale. Relax your fingers. Now with that downward pulse of the inhale, right, the diaphragm is naturally moving downward, so the abdomen is rising on that direction of travel. And the exhalation, it flows up right below the heart. So as you strengthen the diaphragm and the core spectrum here, Maybe you let your head nod a little side to side. Feel where there is reaction through the neck and try to layer that down so it's calming. Relax the neck and the wave of circulation all the way up to the neck, the neck spine, which is really what it is connected to. And finally, we surrender the weight of the body. That might make your knees pivot a bit when you just let it go. Some things that you're trying to control you don't recognize until kind of the finale sensations of practice. Now let's bring the hands to either touch onto your body or feel them reaching back behind you, whatever feels like the natural direction for your arms, for you. And then as you slide any of the weight off of you, you're going to be a little sensitive to the leg direction due to your back being elevated. So you might circle your feet, and then you might even bring your feet together, your knees out on top of your blanket, right? It might feel nice to position those hips for kind of a final release in those joints. They will likely be closed for, you know, much of your day, right? They tend to pattern in with our sitting and walking and, and uh, the environment might affect that way, how you're walking out, out in the snow here. So, you might let this be something you try to practice, this kind of spanning open so that you can strengthen some of these layers that get kind of fragile, right? So when the knees pattern back in now, you're gonna bring your feet to the edge and then as you roll to one side, the tendency of instruction as you go to the right side, because there's some more space in the body and you wanna get let that nostril left side begin to be open. So there's some reasons behind rolling right. And I like to roll sometimes in the direction I don't get out of bed. Um, so my repetition's a little different, but when you come up to sitting, take a seat either on your blanket or on your heels. Some people like to sit in hero pose, um, but find a rather comfortable connectivity so that you have some connection maybe to others that are in this collective experience, this class right now. Bring your hands so that they center in front of the heart and rest your eyes in and your brain power down into the heart center, surrendering here. So as we breathe in together, receiving wellness, and as we 